Today, I want to demonstrate a trading strategy which trades breakouts of Monday's price action. Trades are pretty easy to spot, so for those of you who are taking trades manually, this could be a good one for you. It works best on dollar yen, forex pair, but it does work on a couple of other pairs as well, which I'm going to show you later on in the video. Trades last a maximum duration of four days, and we enter trades between Tuesdays and Thursdays. I was originally told about this strategy by a friend a good few years ago, and I must say, it's one of the rarest times that I get introduced to a profitable strategy. Anyway, let's take a look at the rules and see how it works. I call this strategy the Monday range breakout. And the first thing we want to do is look at the price action of Monday's bar. Now, I always use exchange times, and I encourage you to do that too. So Monday's bar, or it starts as Sunday, ends as Monday. So we're looking at the first bar of the week, which starts normally around 1700 on Sunday afternoon, Eastern Standard Time. And then it lasts about 24 hours, and it'll end Monday about 1700. So that's our first daily bar. And what we want to do is take note of the high and the low. I've drawn these blue dotted lines. I don't know how well they're going to come out on the camera. Now, what we're looking for is for prices to break above either the high or the low of Monday's high and lows. And then what happens is we don't actually buy when price breaks through the high like you'd normally expect to. That's our signal to actually put an order in the market to sell short if we break the low. So let's say on Tuesday, at some point, the market rallies and it breaks above Monday's high. We don't enter a trade there. As soon as that happens, we then place an order, a stop order, to sell short if the price then reverses and comes back down and breaks through the low. And the opposite is true as well. If price is on a Tuesday, Wednesday or Thursday, if they break below the low of the Monday bar, First of all, we don't take the trade, but we put our order in to buy if then prices reverse and then break above Monday's high. Okay, so we're trading breakouts of the high and low, but we have to see the price break either the high or low first, and then we place the opposite order. And like I say, we take trades on a Tuesday, Wednesday, or a Thursday. Now, what could happen is on a Tuesday, for example, prices could rally and break above Monday's high. And as soon as they've broken above Monday's high, that's our signal to place a sell short order at Monday's low. Prices may carry on around here, and then not until Thursday will then prices trigger our stop order if they decline and go lower than Monday's low, and the opposite for a buy order. We have to see the lows broken, then we put in a buy order at the Monday's high. We're going to use a fixed 140 pip stop loss. However, our stop loss is also the order at the other end of Monday's range. So we can actually take two or three trades if prices tend to rally up and down during the week. And then we've got a timed exit. Now, I was originally told to exit at midday on Friday, Eastern Standard Time. However, I have actually done some testing on that exit, and I'm going to show you my preferences a little bit later on when we go to the computer. And the last rule, which I've kind of already mentioned, I'm saying only take the trades if they occur on a Tuesday, Wednesday or Thursday. Because we're exiting on the Friday afternoon, I have a rule which says we don't take trades from midnight Friday. I've done some testing on that and it definitely works. And it makes sense because if we're taking trades after midnight on Friday, we've got a maximum of 17 hours for our trade duration and we're not going to get a very big trade in 17 hours. So don't take trades after midnight on the Friday. Now, let's go and have a look at the backtest results on the computer. I've programmed this strategy on a 10 minute chart for the best accuracy for the backtest. The results you're going to see are from January 2008 through to March 2022, and I've included four pips worth of costs per trade. So let me demonstrate a trade. Like I say, this is a 10 minute chart. And if we look over here, we've got a sell, and this was on our Friday afternoon. So the start here, this session here, starts on Sunday at 1700, and then it ends here at this session break, which would be Monday around about 1700, 24 hour session. So this is our first bar, what I call the Monday bar, and we're looking at the high and the low. So there's the high, you can see, and down here will be the low. So what we're looking for, if we look on a Tuesday, the low was broken there, 
from the minute the low was broken, that's our signal to place a buy stop order at the high. And if we look at that level, then we can see that not the next day, but the next day after that, here, this is our buy point here. So it, it broke the low on the Tuesday, the Wednesday it never quite reached up to the high, but then on Thursday it broke above that high and got us in a long trade. So here's the results. It made 3.8 million yen. There's the equity curve. It's not the smoothest, but it's certainly going in the right direction considering there's very little optimization going on with this strategy. Now let's take a look at the average trade. The average trade value is 9,200. Now, at the moment, we're not taking trades on a Friday, but I have actually programmed it in the code so I can take trades on a Friday, and I'll show you what happens. So now we look at the results with taking trades on the Friday as well. And if you remember before, the average trade was 9,200. Now it's only 7,000, so quite a big drop. So that's showing us that those Friday trades aren't doing us any favours. We can see we're taking more trades. Probably hasn't made the equity curve much different. And no, it hasn't made the equity curve much different. But those Friday trades are definitely weaker and definitely not worth taking. The next thing I want to look at is the exit time. On this strategy here, you can see, you see up here I've got this input at 1650. That's our timed exit, and you can see on this trade here, we just exited the trades at 16.50 on the Friday, regardless of whether we're in profit or not. Now you remember I was originally told to exit at midday, but I thought I'd test that out. So I ran an optimization on the dollar yen strategy, and I looked at the exit time, and I went from 11.50, so 10 minutes before midday, 12.50, 13, 14, 15, and finally 16.50, where I had the input set. And if we look at the results, net profit, look, the highest was actually, in fact, the highest was 13.50. But I just thought, let it run to the end of the day. There's really not that much difference between 13.50 and letting it run. But the point is, whether it's midday or at the end of the session, you can exit the trades anytime because, look, they all work and there's not a massive amount of difference. Next, we're going to look at four other Forex pairs using this strategy. Some of the pairs the strategy actually works on, and some of them the strategy was working very well, but performance has really dropped off in recent years. But just before we look at those, if you haven't already got it, you might like to download my 22-page Beat the Markets Strategy Guidebook, in which I include three more strategies, a little bit like we're seeing here. And I'll leave the link in the description, because at the moment you can get it absolutely free. Okay, let's look at those other markets. I said four, but I actually found five I want to show you. So the first one we look at is pound yen. And we'll just go through the performance reports. That's what the equity curve looks like. And we can see, look, it was working really, really nicely up until the start of 2017. And then it's pretty much just gone sideways. The next one we look at is euro yen. This one was making new highs right up until about August 2020, and it might still make new highs yet. So I thought I'd include that one to show you. Euro dollar. This is one that I actually was trading myself live. And if we look at, we can see the green dots here. Look, here we were making new highs, which was around about the 5th of May 2020. I can't actually remember when I switched this one off when I was live trading it myself, but where it was making new highs, it just tend to go stagnant and just go sideways at best. Let's look at Euro Pound. This was another one that was working extremely well right up until oh, May 2017, and then it's completely stopped working. If you'd have been trading this, you would have started losing money. This is why you need to have methods in play to monitor your strategies so you know when to switch them off. I've done videos about that before. And the last one we look at is Euro, New Zealand dollar. Another similar story. We were making new highs up until May 2015 and then it just 
fell off a cliff and it's been a money losing strategy ever since. Don't ask me why. These strategies were working really well and then just stop. That's just what happens. I mean, it's my job to trade them while they are working and identify as quickly as possible if and when they stop working so that I can stop trading them live. And like I said, I used to trade this strategy on euro dollar and on dollar yen, but I stopped trading euro dollar because we saw what happened. We can see from the equity curve that I was just getting break even results at best. Using this strategy with dollar yen is still working, but I removed that strategy from my portfolio just because I've got enough dollar yen strategies which work in a similar fashion and they're actually better producing better results and I like to keep my portfolio of strategies quite balanced. There's no point in having a load of different strategies all which are taking breakout trades for example. That would be like having one big position on a single strategy on that market. But if you're struggling to find a profitable strategy especially for dollar yen and you like the results that you've seen then you're welcome. Give it a try, test it out, see if you like it. Let me know what you think of the strategy leave a comment down below. Maybe you already trade a strategy a little bit like this yourself. And don't forget that link to the free PDF at the moment. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I hope you found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. That's all for this video though. This is Jared Goodwin and thank you.